just in case you don't yet know about the biggest game phenomenon of the latter half of the 20th century, Magic is a trading card game which immerses players in a fantasy of challenge and duel. This game has changed the world forever. Oh wow. How did this happen? In the beginning, when Magic was created almost 30 years ago, Richard Garfield wanted to make a game so people could sit down and play with each other, right, and get to know each other and have a great time. And yes, it was competitive, there was a winner and loser, but it really made a big difference. It made, you were able to sit down and just play and have fun with someone. And 30 years later, that's still true. I can return target permanent with three or less from my graveyard. One of the things that's really interesting to me when looking back, there's a couple of things that really stood out to me. One is how, in some ways, there's a lot of familiar things that keep popping back up. The idea of your friends and sitting around in community. That there's a lot of things that were true very early in Magic and fundamentally are true now. There are some things that really carried through Magic sort of existence. It was small to begin with because it started small like any business does. And then people, you know, found affinity towards it. Magic came from a, a love of games, mostly, not, not from really anything else uh, because uh, uh, I had no intention of being a professional game designer. I was just working on my hobby. It's hard to fathom how far the game has come. I don't think anyone, I definitely would have never imagined that we'd be where we are now with convention like this and everything that we're doing now. So I'm just kind of, I guess, blown away by how far the game has come over that time. Magic's success has suppressed my wildest dreams. Magic and I have had a 24 year long relationship. The artwork in Magic has changed so much over the years. Like when the game first came out, it was, we just need some art to fill this game, and they got a, a diverse collection of artists to do art for it, and it was great. In designing these cards and commissioning out uh, the work, you want to make sure it reads at two inches in size, and so it's going to need to be flashy and splashy and make you feel something. The feeling that the art gives you actually does help me uh, remember the functionality of the cards and the mechanics and like the, the feeling it creates is very important for me personally. Most people are pretty visually oriented and it's fine to say him to Turok, but if you say, oh yeah, it's that top-down bluish thing with four people holding hands, they'll go, oh yeah, I've seen that card. And when you're playing across the table from each other, you may not have time to see much except for the visuals. An author, you get to spend hours with them. Artists, you get maybe a few seconds. The art is the identifier for what the card is. They play with cards, say, like in Japanese, and they don't read Japanese, but you're looking at the art and you know what the card is and what the card does, and their opponent will probably know the same thing. The artwork is is great. Uh, that's, I think, one of the big draws to magic. To some people, it doesn't matter, and that's okay, because everybody is different and they're here to play, but to the other half of people, it matters so much. The art always pulls me back. This is what gives my life meaning. The game of Magic to me, I call it Magic the Gathering because that's his name. It's all about people coming together from different walks of life. It's always been a way for me to get together like with my friends. It came at a time in my life where I needed the thing that it provides the most, and that's connection with other people. It's how I met my wife, it's how I met so many wonderful friends. There's so much expressiveness and creativity in the community that I think really makes it really wonderful. The gathering part is the key part of it. It's really about the community, about the people, and I think that's the most important part of all of this. We really grab onto the social experience, and it really is, I mean, it's, I know it's cliche to say it, but it, it really is all about the gathering. Magic has been a vehicle through which I personally have connected with new friends, and with existing friends that I have, um, it's opened up new avenues of conversation, and it's, you know, built stories that we can use like to fuel future like good experiences with each other and it's just like a really special connection point that you can hold in your hand and it's a bid it's a bid for friendship one of the coolest places for magic 
is when you have that kind of cross-generational gaming. And I've seen it a lot in this hall, I've seen it a lot recently, where people who grew up with Magic over the past 30 years are teaching their kids how to play, and someday their kids will teach people how to play. So finding more ways to bring those groups together, whether it's Commander, for example, where you have to play with your family in your house or with some close friends, whether it's something like two at a giant battle bond, or you have to sit next to someone that you love playing with, I think there's so much there for Magic and what makes it transcend generations. I was on a uh, caravans tour and in the very first few years of Magic. And I remember a son and father coming up to the table and going, we can't talk to each other about anything else, but here in, with this game gives us something we can both enjoy. I had a gentleman come with his teenage daughter and say, I played this when I was her age. She's playing now. I wanted her to meet you. So that's just, that's amazing. Something that's meant the world to me is I've had so many people come up to me and basically say, hey, I just want to let you know how much magic is personally meant to me, meant to my life. You, you got me through hard times. You helped me make friends. You were something that allowed me to you like focus when I needed focus. I mean, all, all sorts of different reasons, but it all comes down to magic has meant a great deal to me in my life. And thank you so much for being part of that. And that really touches me. Think about all the lives magic has touched and revolutionized, right? Like, I would not be here right now if it wasn't for magic. I don't know people that got married because they met through magic. P kids that would not exist from magic. People who have internal friendships forged from magic. The gathering is the heart of magic. Magic's such a unique game because there's so many different subcultures within the game even. I've been cosplaying for Magic for over 11 years. The reason I started cosplaying was to feel like I fit in with the community. And now, with other people cosplaying, everybody gets to see their favorite characters brought to life. And that's so cool. The culture around Magic, it's like something, you don't see that every day. Like that's something that's taken 30 years to build. Wait, 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 I'm sorry, wait a minute. You're casting what now? In response to an lightning bolt you? It's an evolving game. It's something that literally changes. When I started working on the game back in 1995, there are things that we now do that I, I couldn't imagine that Magic would do. We're always looking at what people are doing and what players are enjoying to try and figure out how we can take it to the next level and what we need to be creating. As the audience sort of wants new things, we meet that demand and make new things. And for example, right now, Magic is very much in this eternal world where people are playing all the cards and Commander's the Rage and, you know, um, Modern is very popular. You know, it, like it's, it's, you know, there was a point in time where Magic was very focused on standard and sort of the, what's the last couple of years of Magic, and now it's very broad and there's a lot more focus on on story stuff. Legendary characters have gotten more important, and so you know, the, like that's one of the neat things about Magic. Watching it is that there's this ebb and flow of things going in and out, and different things mattering and different things happening. The ability of Magic to change over time has led to its success. The ability to uh, to adapt change to new circumstances, to embrace new card designs. You know, we're always looking at what people are doing and what players are enjoying to try and figure out how we can take it to the next level and what we need to be creating. It's, it's kind of this ex ex really exciting sort of thing to watch firsthand. As, as someone who's been there, you know, very close to, to watching it change, it's just a neat thing looking back to see all the changes. For example, there's just rules and magic that were once true that like you forget. Like it used to be if I tapped your blocker, uh, it didn't deal damage, right? And I, I don't know how many Magic players even know that that was ever true. They've been making so many Magic cards, so many sets for so many years, and they are still finding ways to do things that are new and different, which is very impressive. One of the interesting evolutions is, for a while, Magic was really centered on competitive play. I look back at that time so fondly. Gavin's gonna drop out a Swordforge Mystic. Pretty ideal against a deck like this, I would think. I, I think I'm so glad I have those memories. Well, I started playing when I was three and a half. Um, and my dad and my sister were playing and I wanted in and so my dad taught it to me. My first independent event was when I was five um, and then I played my first Grand Prix when I was six. So it's definitely different from when I was playing commander games or play in some more casual events. It taught me a lot about how to train myself, about how to think um, uh, critically. You know, it was so much fun to do and I'm glad I had that phase of my life where I got to you know, travel around, go to events, you know, be on the cutting edge of every set and deck. And it was a great time in my life. The worst part about working in Magic game design is I can't play professionally anymore. 
You know, there very much is a competitive side to Magic. But I think the casual side has really grown in strength over the last 10 years. I mean, part of that is Commander. As Magic has evolved, I think the casual side of Magic is as forefront to the game as it's ever been. It used to be that Magic was, was sort of directed top-down. What happened to the 400 pros impacted the, the 4 million players. And probably around 15 years ago, the, the things changed. They want the social experience first and the, the sort of mechanical one second. This is coincidental sort of with the commander message that it's a, it's a social format first and then there are some rules for how we're gonna have fun together. We see commander growing as maybe the most popular format in the world as a way to have that social game. You sit down with you know, three other people, you all have your decks. It's not about winning or losing, it's about having fun. Commander's been a big emphasis for us to change. Uh, and, and magic always changes, but it changes for different reasons in different ways. And I think the last big push has really big the influence of Commander. There's a recognition of the of a vast market that the designers or Wizards of the Coast wasn't really aware of. With the growth of Commander, we started making more Commander-focused things. For example, there's more Commander decks. Commander Legends 1 came out. Commander Legends A Battle for Baldur's Gate came out this year. So there's a lot of Commander stuff that we've done and more on the horizon. This is maybe our biggest format. We want to make sure that we can create things that will match the hunger our audience has for it. There's certain things that Commander does that we're more conscious of. The color pie, we've had to do some shifting. White's been the biggest example. We're like, okay, we've had to make sure White can do some things that maybe didn't matter in two-player magic, but really matters in multiplayer magic. And so we've had to like reconfigure some things. You know, definitely what happens is as the audience wants things, we have to figure out how to shape the game in that direction. And in doing that, Magic evolves from the next evolution. Magic has to evolve. It's a game that will always be changing, and I hope it's around long after I'm dead. Right? We're always looking for new things to try out. Wizards has done a lot of stuff recently, just the last couple of years, that I thought were kind of off-limits, stuff that we wouldn't have seen with other IPs coming into the game, and some of the themes of sets like Streets of New Capenna, for example, is something kind of outside the norm. So I think we're going to continue to see Wizards innovate and do, uh, do things that we probably don't expect, which is really impressive after 30 years. I don't know where the next 30 years goes. Like if I look back 30 years, like when I, the day I started Wizards back in 1995, October of 1995, if you said to me, okay, predict 30 years from now, I don't think I could have predicted what magic is. I wouldn't have predicted Commander, I wouldn't have predicted all sorts of things. Um, and I feel that same way about the future, that no matter what you think magic is now, what history has shown is other things are going to happen, other influences are going to happen, and it's going to become something different. And that's not a bad thing. It's, like, I think that's one of the most amazing things about the game, is that it evolves with the times, that it becomes the game that its audience needs it to be. We've already seen it a little bit with Secret Lairs, Universes Beyond. We've got celebrities like Lights and Post Malone who are doing magic-themed projects. We do want to keep it representational because you need to represent characters in real solid, you know, ground truth things to tell a story and to elevate it to fantasy and like something you've never seen before and impossible things. Over the years, Magic has tried many different things and each of them our players take, they play, they enjoy, and then either it's successful enough that we try it again or it's like, mm, you know, we're, we're good on this one and we learned a lesson from this, right? And we're always taking that information synthesizing it and deciding what to do next going forward in Magic. We've got a lot of cool stuff on the horizon, some things you wouldn't have expected, and a lot of just what you would expect. We want to really, really make sure that we keep what players love about Magic around. So we're not doing anything with taking away the incredible worlds we've built, and we're going to keep, keep going back to the stuff that players have always loved as we made Magic successful for 30 years. When I think about Magic going back for 30 years, it's like the volume and the quality together it's very rare to find that. It's amazing that it's made it as long as it has when you look at other games that come and go so quickly. And that's something that makes Magic so special is you have people that have uh, built friendships out of this that have lasted 30 years at this point. That's a, that's a big chunk of a lifetime. This game has, I don't know, I, I guess been my friend and um... I don't know, I, I've enjoyed it so much. It's so many different hobbies wrapped into one. It's no wonder it's lasted 30 years and will probably last 30, 60, 90 more. I think magic is going to, like, long exist, this me, you know, I, I, I always joke that when I die at the wake, I think people will be playing magic. People still love the legacy cards, so people still care about work I did 30 years ago, and that means the world to me. It's a hobby 
um, that has become a lifestyle for a lot of people. It's probably going to last a lot longer than the 30 years. I think magic's a, a source of good, and I think that it does a lot of things in many different ways to help people. I love magic at all levels, but it is about the gathering. Bringing people together, nothing is more powerful than that. And to me, that is the power of the gathering in magic.